surprisingly, doesn't have any abbreviations. Uh, so the superconductors, the floor is yours, John. Thank you very much, Laurent, and thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in this, which, which is, I think, is a really important forum um, as, as we deal with the challenges in front of us. So what is superconductivity? And many of you might be familiar with it from uh, some of the settings that are quite exotic in terms of MRI machines and so on. It's a phenomena that, that's been discovered over 100 years ago. Um, and in the 80s, uh, high temperature superconductors were discovered. And it's a phenomenon whereby some materials, when cooled below a certain temperature, display characteristics where there's zero resistance when they're below their critical temperature. So what that means is they don't heat up um, um, and the resistance reduced to zero, so there's no losses uh, in the electrical losses associated with them. Now, that also means you can put more power into them um, because they don't generate heat. Uh, and high power density is, is, is a particular application where you can get more power into a smaller space and that leaves you with a smaller right away. So you might have a right away for uh, 10 meters for uh, uh, traditional cables for a large bulk power transfer for, uh, for a superconducting cable that can be reduced to as, as little as a meter. So effectively, um, you're changing quite a lot number of the parameters and the cost of the cable can be higher, but for projects, the overall cost can be lower. And we have seen uh, commercial superconducting projects uh, start to take off now. Next slide, please. So what state of the art? So on your left here, you'll see a, a, a project which is a, a Nexens um, cable uh, that was used uh, in the Ampacity project in, in Germany, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. And here you see it's, a, it's an AC cable. Uh, it's three phase, you can see the three phases. Um, and what you have is a, is a, a cryogenic outer um, cryostat, which basically keeps the superconductor uh, cool there's a copper shield around it for fault current and effectively liquid nitrogen or another cryogen passes uh, through the center of the, the core and back through the annulus and keeps the whole thing cool and lossless. And uh, these cables have been developed. They're in the Technopedia. They're at TRL 8 or some would argue 9. Um, they're in existence. Um, and then there, there's different type of cables like superconducting cables can deal with both AC and DC technology. Um, they like uh, AC, they love DC. Um, and as part of the Horizons project a couple of years ago, the Best Paths project, um, they, there was a trial done uh, with a superconducting cable with DC power and a single uh, pole um, carried 10 kiloamps and that at 320 kV, which is 3.2 gigawatts. So if you had a, a bipole, you're looking at 6.4 gigawatt uh, in a very small space. Uh, and that was a, a low temperature superconductor, actually. Um, and on the right, then, you, you'll see uh, some of the work that Supernode are doing. And the area that we're working in is really, is the tape is where it needs to be uh, technically, um, but the cryogenic cooling systems need to be optimized further and their, their range and application extended, particularly in Europe, where a lot of our, our power is going to come from the offshore arena. Uh, we need superconducting cables and uh, Supernode, we, in Supernode, we've developed uh, in the last two years, we've developed uh, um, a system uh, that has received a statement of feasibility from DNVGL. Um, and that's that's really important um, as, as we grow the confidence in this in this technology. And what we see here is a is a, is a different type of cryostat to to house the superconductor. And it's really a, it's a special type of uh, metal that's used with a very low coefficient of thermal expansion, because if you cool these down, to minus 200 degrees uh, centigrade, it's very important that you don't have contraction and expansion as you cycle. So this is the area of work that, that Supernode are interested in. Next slide, please. Thank you. So the use cases for superconductors today, they do exist in the grid and their use case is limited today to urban settings. And um, so there's a project in operation uh, for seven years now in Essen in Germany. And that's a distribution project that has been that has been run there successfully. And um, there's also a project in Chingal in, in Seoul, which is also uh, a two kilometer. Um, well, it's one kilometer, but there's a second part coming a section of distribution cable in Chingal in Seoul in Korea. 
and I actually visited the opening of that um, and I was there when they opened it and it was a commercial project um, because the, the land take and the, the real estate, uh, even though the cable was more expensive, the overall project was more competitive because of the losses over the life and also the, the amount of costs associated with the, the, the way leave. So there are two projects and two use cases and there are more projects uh, planned today. There's one in Munich, the Superlink project, which will see the, the range and, and capacity of these extended up to 12 kilometers and over uh, to uh, 500 megawatts in capacity. So they are growing. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, looking out into the future and beyond 2030 particularly, um, there's a new approach to grids and Jochen mentioned earlier that the, the largest uh, DC link in the world is a, is a 12 gigawatt DC link in China. And this is what it looks like. It's, um, it's 1100 kV, um, it's really long and it takes power from, from the, the, the uh, remote regions where, where they, can, they can make the power uh, largely renewable and take it to the, to the East Coast where, where all the, um, the population and demand is. But if you look here at the structure, you'll see that it's it's quite it's a bipole, uh, 1100 kV. You see the size of the the, the pylon is enor is enormous, and if you look at the the single pole nearest in the picture, you'll see that there are people working on the pole. So you get an idea of the scale of this, and and it we require similar amounts of bulk power transfer capacity in Europe in the future as we move to renewable based power systems. And the challenge for us is, is to move that amount of power. And I don't believe that, that those type of structures will be uh, acceptable from a, from a public acceptability perspective. Uh, and particularly in a marine setting, uh, it's not possible to do them. So I think we have a challenge and superconductors, I believe are the answer to economically meet that challenge. Uh, next slide, please. So here is a, a, a potential use case, uh, which uh, Supernode in, in in collaboration with Catapult in the UK and Strathclyde University have done some work. And this is um, uh, a connection system for a two gigawatt offshore wind farm. And if you look here, typically a two gigawatt wind farm, they're the largest connections we have at the moment in Europe or anywhere in the world. And they're moving towards 525 kV HVDC, uh, 100 kV uh, superconductor could do the same, could do the same job. And what you do is you obviate the need. So if you look at the, the first scheme here, schematic on your right, you'll see the wind turbine. And then as you move across, it's converted to, to AC, um, back to DC and through a HVDC cable to shore, back to AC and onto the grid. And with the alternative superconducting scheme, you're able to, to take out the, the, the large platform and just go DC all the way effectively um, and save quite an amount of money. And that's an early application that we believe is uh, could save significantly up to 35% on the cost of the overall connection. Um, next slide, please. So areas for further development. Um, so bringing this, this cost competitive solution to market, uh, I think that the work ahead of us in the coming years that we're taking on uh, with others is the superconducting cable system development and qualification program. And we're well on our way to that. Deployment and demonstration projects are going to be key to, to develop confidence in the long distance capabilities of this technology and industry collaboration. And today is great to, to see the community come around and, and look at the, the new options that, that are going to help, help us to electrify our economies and, and decarbonize them. And I think most importantly is to establish a secure and reliable supply chain into the future. So it, the availability of materials is going to be a, a big issue as, as we decarbonize and there's a very supply, there's a very robust supply, but it needs to be secured and developed as a supply chain. So that's that that completes my presentation. Thank you.